Hello, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music. My name is Ian, and today I'm going to show you how I made this MIDI, which is based off of the new Juice World song, Robbery. Okay, so first off, the piano that I'm using is Addictive Keys. I'm using the Jazzish setting, and if you have a Focusrite sound card, which is what I just got a couple weeks ago, this actually comes with it. You can actually get any of the individual sound packs from Addictive Keys. I chose the Grand Piano. This is one of the presets in it. And then I just adjusted the settings just a little bit. Here's the original, and here's what I changed. So it's pretty much the same. A little change in timber and the tone and the softness of it. In terms of effects, all I did was just add a little EQ. I took out the low end, ducked some of the low mids just a tiny bit, and then cut off some of the high end. So without the EQ, it sounds like this. sounds nice but as soon as you start adding instruments and the bass and the drums and whatnot you're, you're gonna want to cut a lot of that out so so originally I wanted to play this for you live not this exact version of the MIDI but I wanted to play you what I started out with but unfortunately my computer isn't powerful enough for me to play live and record at the same time with OBS Studio. So I'm just gonna do it the way that a lot of you probably are going to do it anyway, which will probably make for a better tutorial for you anyway. So first thing that I changed was the tempo of the project. I put it at 160, which is, it seems a little fast, but that's pretty much what the tempo was when I tried to sync the tempo to the song. Typically I play everything in the scale of G major, AKA E minor. Both G major and E minor have the same exact notes in it. It's the same pattern of notes. It just depends on what chord you start out with will determine whether it's called E minor or G major. But I just put, use that scale because it's in the middle of the keyboard and it's what I taught myself with. But in order to play in the exact scale that Robbery is in, I switched this from C and moved it down to F. So that's going down five steps or going up seven steps. So if you're trying to follow along with exactly what I'm doing, just go into your uh, just go into your mini piano right here in your channel settings and just switch this over to this key right here. And then you'll be able to copy the exact notes that I'm playing on the piano roll. So you'll see in these ghost notes that we have notes kind of all over the place, all the way up top and even down here. But the way that I start this out is actually by making this main melody right here with the chords. And this is a good tip because this is actually how Nick Mira does it. He will make basic chords first and then he'll break those chords up. The way that I'm gonna show you how to break it up might be a little different than what he does because I'm not Nick Mira, obviously, but this is definitely gonna help you guys. So let's start with the first chord, which is right here. So all we're gonna do Gonna extend these out. And then our second chord is here. And then I'm gonna shorten this and we're gonna move to here. And then that just repeats. So when you have your basic triads right here, one thing that you can do is take the bottom note of the chord and press control down and it'll move it down an octave. So now you'll have a bigger sounding chord. Then from there, you can work on the melody and basically all we're gonna do is shorten these notes. Now, like I said, normally I would be playing this with the chord because this is easily done with two hands. But again, this is pretty much perfect for the tutorial because now I could show you things like this where we're just gonna add in this melody.
So now let's just listen to this top melody and you're gonna notice that there's something wrong and I'm gonna fix that for you. So when I was playing this live, a lot of times like these other notes will be off the grid a little bit. So what I'll do is hit control and Q and that will quantize everything. So I'll actually end up with these two notes right on top of each other after I quantize. Even though I already add the little flam, the two notes gliding into each other. But to fix that, just highlight those notes and hit alt and S. And these are the natural settings that I have. So I have the velocity turned down to the left. So that makes the beginning note lower in volume than the second note. And then I have the timing set to here, a little bit of tension, but the tension is not gonna matter as much. And then I have the preservation set to the end. So when the note ends, it's still in time with what I originally had set. In some songs, you might hit this trigger ahead button, which will make it so that the second note that is played is the note that is played on time. And then the note that's gliding into it is a little ahead of time. But I noticed in this song, it was the other way around. So it seems like the note that is gliding is actually the note that is on time. And then the note that it's gliding up to is actually delayed a little bit. So I would have this trigger ahead off for this particular song. So now it sounds like this. And maybe he did have it where it glides a little earlier, but to my ears, this sounded like it matched up a little bit better. Now you'll notice that there's these notes up here and this I did play separate from the rest of these notes, mainly because when I'm learning a new song, it's hard for me to really jump all over the keyboard. So I'll really just stick to the chords, the main chords and the main melody. And then I'll add these little embellishments afterwards. So we're gonna use that same technique of gliding these notes. So we're just going to put these notes on top of each other whenever we see a glide note. So now it sounds like this. So we're just going to do the same thing. Hit Alt and S. Those are now sliding into each other for us. Now something you guys might not have noticed in the original song, there's these little embellishments way up here. My piano doesn't even go this high, so I had to transpose a whole octave just to be able to play these. But basically this comes in during the chorus, specifically at the end of the song. I'm not sure if it's throughout the entire song, but I did notice it at the very end of the song with these little hits. And then we're just gonna shorten these because they're just really quick hits. So Nick Mira actually did release a melody tutorial that I definitely recommend you guys check it out on the Internet Money channel. And he actually kind of did this exact technique in the video. So he's not holding any sauce back in terms of how he spreads out his main melody. So he'll have his main chords, divide that chord up into lower notes, have his melody, have uh, extra embellishments here. This is even extra, even further above anything that he did in the, in the video. So he has these little extra embellishments or accents, if you want to call them that, on top of the melody, just to change up the chorus just a little bit. But you'll notice that these are all the same in volume. Well, in the song, I believe that these are just a lot lower in volume. So I'm going to turn these down and then let's take a listen now. Sounds a lot better. Another thing that you're gonna notice is that these chords are playing a little too quickly. He makes his melodies sound a lot more complicated than what they really are, or his chord progressions anyway, sound a little busier than what they really are. And all he's doing is cutting the beginning of these. Now there's a little delay in the chord and it makes it so that this bottom note has more prominence and there's just a little more movement in the chords. And then on, the, on this last one, I just left it alone because it just feels a little more dramatic with the chord coming in right away. So let's take a listen. So now we're starting to really feel the vibe of robbery for sure with that little delay in the chord. I'd say that that's probably the biggest tip in this entire video is cutting your chords so that they have a little more movement in them. But we're still not done. You'll notice in these bottom notes, we have some more cutting. This is another reason why I wanna play this chord progression as is, because it would be almost impossible for me to do. Even though I have pretty big hands, I wouldn't be able to reach 
all the way down here and play the chords and play the melody and play the embellishments and the accents. It would be impossible for me to do. Actually, it's physically impossible because my piano doesn't have that much of a range on it. It's a 61 key piano, not an 88. Pay attention to this bottom note before I cut it. We'll do a quick before and after. It's a really beautiful technique because now we have movement in these bottom notes. So it just sounds like there's a lot more going on, even though we're just basing everything off the main chord that we had. This is how you can make a piano just sound a lot more involved with the song. You'll notice that there aren't any other instruments in the song. It's just the piano. This really shows you why, because the piano is doing a lot of work here. Now here I did something a little different. So I'm realizing that I went ahead and cut this and I moved it down here, and that's not an octave. And then I moved this note up. And then it looks like I took this note and moved it up here. So now we have this sound. So all that is, is just an inversion. So it's still the same notes, but we just had the notes placed differently on the piano. So let me go back. So you'll see that this note right here is the same note as this note right here. And this bottom note right here is the same note as this note right here. I like the way both sound, but again, I was trying to mimic more closely what the actual song was doing. One curious thing though, that I will note is that this note right here I'm switching is not anywhere else in this chord. And this is just a case where I'm just using my ears and it just literally sounded better to me. So if I were to leave it alone, It just sounds really jumbled up. What I went ahead and did is move this up here, even though that wasn't a part of the original chord, but this chord still works. And then to replace the chord that I had here, I just moved this up here. Having it up here and then replacing that with this just opened it up a little bit better. Now again, if you wanted to, you could just stick with just breaking that chord up and then keeping the original if that's what you like. Just use your ears. It's not a big deal either way. The very last thing is breaking up this final part of the chord. So we have all these low notes and then all of a sudden we don't want to lose all that body that we had going on with these low notes. So what we're doing is just dropping this down and then moving this up and that just gives this bottom bass note a little bit more movement. Basically all we did was go down an octave and then this is just a quick lead lead in into the original note that we had which was right here. So it's just adding a little bit of movement. I'm gonna go ahead and loop that and then I'm gonna burn this. And we'll notice that I made a few changes here in the second part. I think it was at that point where I realized that this chord right here just felt a little long. What I went ahead and did was just double that chord up just by splitting it. And now it plays twice. And then I have a little embellishment right here. So basically, what we're doing is playing this bottom note twice as well, but I, just like we had a lead in into the octave, I kind of did the opposite here. So instead of leading into a, a new octave, I led back into the same octave. So it's just reversing what we already heard, which is really common to do when you're making melodies. So if you go one way in the first half, try go, doing the opposite thing in the second half. So it just adds a little bit of flavor to the second half so that it's not repeating the same exact thing, but you still have the general motif, this, the general idea of the song still going, but it just adds a little bit of interest to it. Another change that I made was I took this note and moved it up here. 
It's basically just highlighting this end note that we keep ending on. And you'll see that we end it on the first set of four bars and at the end of the eight bar loop. But again, it's just a little change that's still sticking with the same idea, the same concept, and then just adding a little bit of change by using notes that we've previously already used. It just gives you a little bit more movement and a little difference to keep the ear listening, noticing these little changes here and there. And you'll notice that that's definitely a technique that Nick is using in uh, Robbery. It's not a constant four bar or two bar loop that's going over and over and over again. It's a full eight bar loop, like the whole eight bars, he keeps it pretty interesting by just changing little notes here and there. And because we used MIDI here, You'll notice that all these notes are exactly the same volume, but if we go back to the version that I played, you'll notice that these notes have a little bit more life to them. And that's how a real piano would be played. So in order to do that manually, what we're gonna do is go in here and let's highlight the main chords here, Alt R, Alt and right click to set that back, randomize the velocity. That looks pretty random, but you'll notice that it's not how we want to keep it because now these notes are a little too loud. Alt and X. We're able to level these how we want. So let's go ahead and play and just use our ears. I'm going to add a little more variation to it. And that sounds pretty good to me. And then we'll notice that you'll notice that there's another line of notes here that are all exactly the same. So let's go ahead and do the same thing there. Alt and R. And let's just vary this a little less because we do want our melody to kind of be consistent because a good piano player will have that humanization, that variation, but it's not going to be totally all over the place. Turn it down a little bit. So you'll notice that most of those notes are louder than the majority of the other notes. Now these, we probably want to keep consistent. Already did like the volume of those, but we're just gonna turn those down just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it looks almost just as humanized as what I played. So eventually I am gonna get a new computer and I'll be able to play all this stuff live for you. Again, I wouldn't be playing all of these notes at the same exact time because that would physically be impossible, no matter how good I am at piano. I think it would be nice for you guys to see how much faster it is to actually just play simple chords and then do the little chops and breaks that I showed you how to do in this video. But yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.